Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Privacy and the Security Edition. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're um, if you're new to the channel or uh, you don't catch the lives, we are doing the lives right now in 720p for a little while as I'm on a seriously limited internet connection as I am traveling the country in a mobile office but it looks the same doesn't it um and uh but the videos will be still be recorded in uh in 1080p so anyway let's go ahead and get into the privacy news uh just three privacy articles today first uh duckduckgo launches a new email protection service to remove trackers so the idea is you get this at duck.com email address that is worth it in and of itself i want a duck.com email address guys epic epic and so um there is a concern with this. The biggest criticism DuckDuckGo has is that they use AWS. And if they are using AWS to grab your emails, it basically it's like it gets in there, filters some stuff out, and then relays out the email. Well, if they're collecting all your emails on AWS, then Amazon could have access to all of the things. And we know that Amazon likes to play nicely with DOJ. And so that is a little bit problematic in that respect. Okay. Um, and so that is the concern I have. The idea here is really good. Um, they could do one major thing at Duck go and get off of AWS, that would solve it. Now, I don't know if this email router is going through AWS. It just makes sense that it probably is. So uh, you can actually go ahead and do this. It's going to do a decent job of removing various trackers and such that are put into emails that will tell you if you've opened it, used for marketing uh, employments uh, on newsletter lists and things like that. So if you'd like to have a little bit more privacy to see what is going on, that really is... Um, that really is is a good thing to do. So there is DuckDuckGo's email, and uh, we could poke and probe around with it a little bit. And uh, if it doesn't use AWS, much better if it does. I don't know. Kind of crazy. Anyway, next, uh, the Pegasus spyware. What to know about the NSO Group's home uh, phone surveillance software. Now, though, I, I could have put this in security. I could have put this in privacy. I put it in privacy well, because I only had two articles otherwise. Um, but the other reason is it raises these concerns to say, you know what? I'm not... I'm going to do everything right. I'm not going to sign up on mailing lists. I'm not going to... Um, access weird websites for my phone. I'm not going to use my banking on the phone and things like that. So you have this, you've taken this conscious approach to secure your phone and your device. You're reading terms of service. You're being diligent and saying, ah, I don't really want anything to do with that particular terms of service. So let's not use that particular terms of service. And so let's not use that service. Well, this thing here, it just gets around it because you're not agreeing to it. It's just spyware. But what it does is it literally logs anything and everything you do on your phone. It can record microphone data. It can record video data. It can have access to your call logs, your apps. It's a keystroke. And uh, where this came from is several people who are activists, journalists, and business executives had this on their phone. Phones on an activist organization's list, more than 50,000 phone numbers for politicians, judges, and lawyers, and teachers. Also on the list are 10 prime ministers, three presidents, and a king. Don't go in his country. He might be... Um, don't mess with the monarchy, man. Don't mess with the monarchy. Um, so this raised some concerns. They're saying, well, none of these people are on our list. <laughs> well, your stuff's on their phones. So, uh, it's like, I don't care. Oh, these people aren't on our list. Well, nobody, nobody should be on your, you shouldn't have a list to put illegal spyware on people's phones without their consent. But, of course, they sell their services to, you know, government agents, spies, things like that. So, whatever. <laughs> How long before a PI gets it and starts bugging their their uh, their clients' wives' phones to see everything they're doing? Oh, oh boy. Uh, I just can't watch another soap opera. <laughs> And finally, a Catholic priest quits after being anonymized, um, uh, after anonymized data reveals the use of Grinder. So if you are curious about the title, there is, uh, of course, if you are not a believer, there's a Bible verse that says, be sure your sin will find you out. 
since this is related to a priest, I had to do a be sure your phone will rat you out. <laughs> now you get it. Um, just a, a little note. Now, I, I mean, I think if the Catholic Church would allow priests to get married, they could probably get away with some of this stuff. Um, you know, keep the altar boys and the um, other people safe. Uh, just give priests a wife, please. Please, outdated mode. Uh, and there's nothing in the Bible about being uh, celibate either um, as a forced thing. Uh, but this priest was allegedly using Grinder, and Grinder being a phone app has access to all sorts of, of information. If I remember correctly, Grinder is the one that um, it is an app developed for homosexuals, uh, primarily to my understanding. You turn on location data, and if you go in the proximity of a person who also has it, it'll be like, bing, bing, hey, there's a random hookup. I, that is why some people don't like your lifestyle. I realize not all of you play that way, but but I'm telling you, yeah, um, yeah a random stranger just beat my phone. Anyway, um, so, yeah, you're using these phone apps and you're doing all of the data. Now, what's interesting about this is that this data is legally obtained. It's legal, legally obtained. Mobile carriers sold and still sell location data to brokers who aggregate it and sell it to a range of buyers, including advertisers, law enforcement, roadside services, and bounty hunters. Great. Think of that next time you put something on your phone. Um, any of you people who converted away from certain religions, um, bounty hunters uh, might be looking for you. Be careful of those phone apps, folks. Uh, very exciting indeed. Uh, mobile carriers so Let's see. We read that part. Uh, carriers were caught in 2018 selling real-time location data to brokers, drawing the ire of Congress. But after carriers issued public mea culpas and promises to reform the practice, investigations have been revealed that phone location data is still popping up in places it shouldn't. Your T-Mobile even broad broadened its offering, selling customers web and app usage to a third party unless people opt out. <laughs> How exciting. This is why my phone doesn't do anything except through Tor. <laughs> I'm telling you, folks. I'm telling you. Um, so, yeah, this uh, this priest was allegedly using Grinder, And um, uh, it, it's just, it, it's not, it's not good on your diocese when your priest, who's supposed to be celibate and practicing the Bible, is using an app for the homosexual community. Um, but be sure your phone will rat you out. <laughs> if you want to help support the channel, we do have several affiliates. And today I am highlighting Linode. I'm just happy with, with Linode. I'm running some client sites over there. And um, actually just th this week, I just I had a spare half an hour while Level 1 Tech News was going on. And uh, I spun me up a VPN so that um, I can um, use a consistent IP address uh, wherever I happen to be. And um, filtering into a VPN that I can control the server so I know I will be well protected there. So anyway, um, using my Linode link, tlm.li forward slash Linode will get you $100 in credit. This is good for any number of Linodes you want to do for 60 days. You can spin up VPNs, you can spin up Nextcloud instances, you can spin up cPanels and servers and um, all sorts of fun stuff. But anyway, uh, there you have it, guys. Uh, head on over to Linode for your cloud hosting things. Just a note, I do not advocate using anybody's cloud hosting. Do your backups locally a couple times in a couple different places. But there are excellent uses for Linode, tlm.li forward slash Linode. Let's have a look at some security news. So, in security news, uh, hackers get past Windows Hello by tricking the webcam. <laughs> Surprising nobody. So, security researchers, they use infrared photos and third-party hardware uh, to trick the camera. Of course, this is, you know, go without passwords. Everybody hates passwords. Guys, I don't know why in the world they keep on trying to pollute the world to say everyone hates passwords. Well, if everyone hates passwords, and I know after I'm thinking passwords aren't that bad, then I must go ahead and change my view to hate passwords too so I can be part of the global cabal. Um, no! Who in the world hates passwords? Can you point out these people other than big corporate greedy slimes who want us to use biometric data that can't be changed? No, you compromise my password, I can change it. I mean, really, folks. 
Really? Services like Apple Face ID, uh, they made authentication more commonplace. You know, Windows Hello is trying to do it. Um, kind of crazy. See, this is why we use too much bandwidth. Stop pushing these video ads. And I'm actually, I'm just, I've bought 54. Do I see 55? I've blocked 50, oh, 59 things on this page now. Thank you, Ublock Origin. Eight privacy trackers. Wired.com, guys. Let's avoid that site. I should be archiving these, shouldn't I? Um, by manipulating a USB webcam to deliver an attacker uh, chosen image, the researchers would trick Windows Hello into thinking the device's owner's face was present. Very exciting. So, yeah, if you think this is good, secure. Yeah, and now, unfortunately, since it's biometric, you can't change it. So, you know. If this were a password you breached, you can change a password. Oh, shocking. Um, anyway, two factor, uh, whoa, what is this? Uh, two factor, no, uh, two for Tuesday vulnerabilities. So this is Windows and Linux, actually. So we actually have a, a zero day Linux bug that allows some root escalation. And so they had the Windows one up here and then the Linux one was down on the bottom. So this is uh, CV 2021. Of course, Windows is waiting for patch Tuesday and Linux already has it patched in most places. <laughs> Welcome to open source. Uh, of course, that means that you have to, to push it. Um, successfully exploited the out-of-control bounce. So this was a weird bug. Both systems, basically, you had to create a directory structure. So you had to do a make directory structure that utilized about a gigabyte of memory utilizing a whole series of uh, slashes. Why does this work? I don't know. But literally... This required, um, so the Linux one requires 1 million nested directories and 5 gigabytes of memory and 1 million inodes. <laughs> In other words, most computers are going to crash out before that happens. So generally, this is not a huge deal, um, but this is the steps they took. The Windows one uh, was about as complex, but it required, it required like, um, a thousand fold fewer directory structures, uh, it needed. I can't remember exactly what the size is on that. Um, but anyway, this is now patched. I would not call this necessarily super serious because it's going to crash your computer before it actually succeeds. Uh, but, uh, at the same time, yeah, this, certainly is one and nobody's really blaming them for bad code it's like who expects somebody to come by and make a million nested directories to try and exploit the kernel uh okay but whatever <laughs> well you can help support the channel over on patreon patreon.com slash t-o-m-m that's t-o-m-m that does support uh the linux the christian and the writing stuff and i might pull the writing stuff off of there soon i don't know we'll figure it out we'll figure it out but anyway um you can uh, jump on over there if you want to help support the channel over on patreon thanks for watching and i hope that you enjoy switching to linux thank you for watching this video from switched to linux this channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now you can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.